a very bad hair day today. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. It's All over the place. <laughs> Hello, Bacon. Let's debunk some TikTok sewing hacks. Do they work? Do they not work? Is your life in danger? Will you lose their fingers? Am I being over dramatic? I'm not a TikTok person. I think I'm way too old for that. But it's nice to see what people are trying I to do. I had a baby and he apparently wants to nurse again. Say hi, Stella. Baby. <laughs> Oh, I did not know that. I know it sounds ridiculous. I should have known this before, but I never, never, ever heard of this before. I'm trying to find a normal spool to see if I have any one of those because mine are just hollow plastic cones. Let's see. If there is any of those that have this, it will be this one. It doesn't seem to... Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't, I couldn't take it off, but I found out something more interesting. You can pull this part to make the spool bigger and then you thread this part. And then when you close it, it will not unwind anymore. But, but this is the only thing it does. I'm sad. No hiding places for my needles. At least with the threads I have. So sad. I, I don't spend too much money on sewing thread. So everything I have is either paper or very cheap plastic tubes. I did not know that either. Ooh, interesting. Ooh, mine is half an inch or 1.3. Three centimeters. Yeah. Why haven't I ever thought about using this as a gauge for seam allowances? Oh man. But I do have a very skinny one and a very thick one. It's not really standard. This one is 0 0.75 inches or two centimeters. But it is very cool to learn something new that I never noticed before. <laughs> Try to sew volume fleece using straws on the tips of the presser foot not to tangle everything. This could work, but from the last time I tried putting some straws on my presser foot, things did not go well. The legs are very thin, so it wouldn't stay in place. But I found this other one that's supposed to help as well. Let's just add some masking tape. But doing this to my machine, it, it feels illegal. <laughs> this is enough. I don't think this will be much of a problem. However, the machine has a needle transport. That means the needle will move back and forth when I sew. And you see how the needle hole moves with the needle up and down? That's the needle transport. It's great for when you have long strips of fabric to sew, but it is a very annoying when you need to add anything to your machine that's not coming from the manufacturer. If you can avoid buying a sewing machine with needle transport, do it. The guy that sold me this, he said, oh, it's great for when you're sewing skirts, longer skirts, but I never noticed a difference. It's all BS. It just made me pay more for the machine. Oh, unfortunately, I don't have fleece to test it out, but I don't think this will be a prop. So the main idea is that having this will avoid the fleece getting stuck on the thing. And this is something that happens a lot. This one will receive a five out of five snakes for working and not being that dangerous. Putting a needle in the border of the sewing machine to attach a fabric and sew a circle. This could work. This could actually work better than the one putting it in the front. Oh Lord, I'm not looking forward to this one. Here is my needle. I don't have anywhere I can put this outside of these holes for the gauges. It's not going to hold the needle. This this is not optimal at all. I will hold it because it will fly, fly everywhere. <laughs> kind of started pulling the fabric. Don't know if you were able to notice that. I tried to not influence the fabric as much as I could. Never mind, it got stuck. Yeah, I find this very dangerous, so I'm giving it zero out of five snakes. And unless you have a very specific size of circle that you want to, this makes no sense whatsoever. Do not try this at home. Oh. Holding the upper thread, you can just put it in the max tension that you have on the machine And then you have two free hands Making me a little bit nervous I will try this on the industrial machine I set the speed for the lowest possible because I have to grab to the thread here I don't know if this is going to be a good thing I think it will just keep exploding on me. No back stitching, because the back stitch is always very, very quick. Maximum stitch length, lowest velocity. For only one hand to control. Yeah. Is it necessary? Ooh, it works. It works better than the shearing foot I have and better slash quicker than sewing and then pulling the thread. Although I was skeptical, it worked pretty well and I'm kind of happy with it. Just to find a better way to hold on to the thread so I have both hands available for moving the fabric here and 
there because I don't like playing with the tension gauges, especially in, in this machine. Some of you might know that once you mess it up, then it will be messed up forever. But I'm kind of scared because have you heard that noise? Either the thread is going to break or the needle is going to bend and I don't like that. I'll let you decide how many snakes this one will have and if you would be brave enough to do this on your sewing machines. Maybe in a domestic one it's easier, but on my industrial very expensive one, I, I don't think I would do it. Let me know what you think about this, please. <laughs> a bottle cap to sew curved lines? I don't know. And they don't even tell you how they actually made it stay in place. I'm skeptical. <sighs> I don't have double-sided tape. Just use this instead. Just glue it here. Ah, uh, it won't work. <laughs> oh my god, why don't people just buy a gauge? I don't know, they're so inexpensive, why? This doesn't even help in an emergency situation. Let me try to find something to glue this. I have double-sided tape for holding carpet. If it breaks my machine, I will sue the person who did this. I'm telling you, if I can't get it off anymore. <sighs> <laughs> just put it here in a place that I think I will be able to remove it later. And let's use this as a gauge then. For circles, no straighter lines, maybe. But again, why? Why go through the trouble of doing that? <laughs> This is just ridiculous, buy a gauge. Please don't, stop, stop. This is, no, it doesn't work. It doesn't work, no. Ooh, this is very interesting. Always finish the bio stage, just folding it. But it would be nice to have like continuous okay. thing. I don't know if I'm competent enough for that. Fold it. Wait, what? Ah, like this, 90 degrees, cutting the excess. With the worst pair of scissors I have. Yeah. Almost fell from my chair. And then, there we have it. Oh, it works. Ooh, I never doubted it would work. I just doubted my capacity of doing this without making everything explode. Another thing that I learned today. <laughs> so beautiful. What I would do is I would fold this and then add the second part over here. So when I turn it, I have this beautiful finish here. But it's chunky. It's not the best. Sometimes I will sew them like this. And sometimes I will leave it open and just fold and sew like a normal bias tape so it will stay in place. But this is me not having the necessary technique to do it right. Yay, it works and I'm able to do it. <laughs> if I'm able to do it, then anyone is able to do it. I am not coordinated at all. Five out of five snacks for this one. Don't use your presser foot as a screwdriver for anything and any part of your machine because if you have a cheaper presser foot and you do that and it's crooked, then you're going to break the machine, the needle, the presser foot, bar, the needle bar, everything. The machine will explode. Don't do it. What? Oh, come on. This is just way too much work for a gauge. No, just use the tape. No, what the hell? So I, I have this beautiful metal ruler that needs to be attached. Come to the most perfect circle ever cut in my entire life. Actually, it doesn't make my life any easier than just trying to follow the edge of the presser foot and attaching wobbly things to a sewing machine is not the best way to go about this. Could be also because maybe it's a very, very thin ruler that doesn't provide the necessary height for it to work as a gauge. I don't know. It just didn't work for me, I think, the way it should have. And yee-hoo. So this one is one out of five snakes in case you find a ruler that's high enough. Might help, but not for me. Oh, hmm. I like that. It's the same as that weird gauge that I bought that I paid a lot of money for and that doesn't help me much, to be honest. I just realized I don't have any round magnets to do this, but it will work for sure and it will be better than this. It's just an expensive piece of metal that I bought for a keep or eat video. I never used it again. And as I said, it's very expensive. I need magnets to try this out. Urgh. But even though I don't have any, I will give this a 5 out of 5 because I love the idea. This is a very viral chain stitch that 5 Minute Crafts use a lot. However, this is the invisible stitch. They're just making this loopity loops there to make it pretty and oh, it, it works like magic. When it's actually easier just to sew an invisible stitch the same way, actually, without needing the loops. <laughs> so it's a step less than they are showing you. Let me show you with thick embroidery thread. <sighs> I pulled it too much. So long since I have. Ah, fe da puta! And the needle just doesn't want to go through. And then you just pull it 
and it will magically <gasps> disappear or not because your thread is so thick because you're trying to show something interesting on the internet yes this is what you have on the outside so you went through all that trouble for the same catch a few fibers and move forward this is an exaggeration of the invisible stitch but it's the same thing and it will take you less time than just looping everything removing the loops just for show it's just for show they are just trying to make you click on all those videos you know useless zero out of five snakes for this one so wanted to give you an update on the pom-pom stash the bin is already overflowing <laughs> hello Welcome to my lion mane! Trying some things that should curl my hair, but yeah, I, I don't know. Lately, every day has been a very bad hair day in this house. Anyway, I digress. Hi! We are making a 100,000 pom-pom dress for me to wear in London in June of this year. Do you want to participate? Send pom-poms to my P.O. box, link in the description. The pom-poms need to be two and a half centimeters in diameter or one inch, and they can be in any color and any yarn. And also, don't forget to share the bacon family with your friends because we're also trying to reach 100,000 bacons until June of this year. I know, I dream big, huge, gigantic. So help me out by the YouTube triad of like, comment and subscribe and join the bacon family. So let's go back to some debunking, shall we? That's it? Do I have internet anymore? It's repeating everything. There's like... What? No. Let's go then to YouTube shorts. Ooh, chopsticks and a bobbin. They are using chopsticks and a bobbin to make pleats. I've seen that and I've seen the one with a fork, but... What? I found other ways of making pleats on the internet, but since this is the most preposterous one, I will try with the beautiful bobbin and the chopsticks. Let me just remind you, I'm a left-handed person and I will have to do the pleats with my right hand. Just go on hard mode, right? Oh God. I really thought it would be hard to find chopsticks in this house, but it was actually easy. <laughs> uh, chopstick, an empty bobbin to keep them open. Yes. Lose my mind. Durch die Nacht. Again reminding you, I am left-handed and I have no idea how to do this. I'm gonna sew to the middle so I can put them right next to each other. <laughs> I am pleasantly surprised by this one. Is it quicker than hand pleating on the machine while you go? I don't know, I'm not sure, I don't think so. Is it quicker than marking all your pleats and then going to the machine? Yes. Does it work? Yes. Five out of five. Although, this is ridiculous. It works. I love it. Nah, there's no way that's going to work. Using a bread knife to cut stitches? Why? I feel so stupid doing this. <laughs> Oy, oy, oy. Yes, it worked. So our very old and thoroughly used bread knife is sharp enough still to cut through a seam. Let's remove the fuzzy with tape. It removed a few of the things, but most of them are still there. So let's try on the other side. Yeah, it worked better, but yeah. Bread knife, duh, it will not work with, right, with close stitches. A lot of fuzzy bits. I will try from the right side. Eww. Now it worked. Eww. Ah. Mini heart attack. Mini heart attack. Well, oh. I don't recommend you use the bread knife to cut your seams open. It might damage the fabric. And removing the fuzzy bits with the tape kind of works. I was expecting more, to be honest. I'm so used to picking with my fingers that I don't think this is a problem for me. But you decide. I don't. Does it work for you? Would you use this hack at all? Confused! Oh! I never waxed a needle like this, but maybe it works? Maybe it works! I use candles for waxing my thread because they're generally cheaper than buying the beeswax thingy. The amount of hand sewing, it's not that big that I would spend money on that. But I don't know, can you pierce through a candle easily? I think their hole is already pre-made, but they advertise it as just piercing the thing. Just going through with the needle is easy. I'm not sure because candlesticks can be hard. Pray that I don't lose my fingers on this. <laughs> it will not go. Let me use some violence. Whoa. I guess the first one needs to be done with violence, but now the needle is stuck here. I cannot remove any pliers. Why they deceive me like this? The thread is not even 
waxed, 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 because the hole is way too big now. That's what she said. That's my joke. Damn it, Dwight. <laughs> Second time, cut a little bit, but not really. Of course, you can use candles. As I said, I do it too. But doing like this is easier and more effective than actually piercing a needle through your candlestick. Zero out of five snakes for this one. It's way too complicated and it doesn't help you. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then consider checking out another one and subscribe. It's free. I will see you soon. Ta-ta.